God's good. Amen. Father, we honor you for the opportunity to be in your presence today and uh, to just be with your saints and be with you. We give honor to you. You're such an amazing God. You're bringing us all through everything that we need to go through to get where we're going because you have a plan for our lives. I pray for every child and every grown person in this room that all of us will wrap our heads around how big you are, how amazing you are, how loving you are, how purposeful you are, and how you never miss. So, Father, we thank you that you are fighting for us, battling for us, and you've put us here to simply enjoy our lives. Allow us to do that with grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. How is everybody? Well, just to make sense of that video, uh, it's, it's, it's just a lot of things that, that me and my family have been in the middle of for years, working through, praying, asking God, seeking God, um, trying to get some things done that's in our hearts. Some of it you may or may not know about, um, but uh, we have been successful with our partnership and the financial center, the bank is now open with deposits in it. Loans are going out, reaching our community. The, um, the, uh, the scholarship that's at UNO, and here in next week, I think Callie and the team will be posting uh, uh, so that everybody here at AWC and other students around the world will know about the scholarship. And this is sort of a kingdom scholarship. It just takes time to write these so that it makes sense. You know, it has to make sense to the world. Uh, we can't just go in there and quote scriptures and say, <laughs> you know, and then shout hallelujah. They don't understand that language. Uh, so a lot of lawyers and a lot of folks have been writing for a long time to get these scholarships available. And now we have enough for 10 students. Yeah. I don't know if you know how amazing that is, but that's really amazing. God's been really good. So, um, for, for AWC kids, for AWC folks, our relatives, I mean, these are things tell your children about, tell your nieces and nephews about. Uh, these scholarships, though, are for entrepreneurial leadership scholarships. So, uh, the best way to make the world better is to provide jobs, not just have one, right? So, uh, we're in the business of providing jobs. We're doing that through Dream Business. We're doing that through the bank also. So it's just a great opportunity, especially for Linnell and I. And I really appreciate her for putting up with my madness for the last 35 years and uh, walking with me. And she's really given birth to anything that's important in my life. So uh, I just really honor her. Uh, and uh, I don't know what else was up there. There was something else up there. But uh, So things are changing in our life, but some things remain the same. They remain the same, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. Um, so, and it's a blessing day being here with our children, so I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can not to bore them so that uh, you can go out and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. It's a beautiful day outside. Well, uh, you have your Bibles. You have your stuff there. Let's, let's talk a little bit about this, um, this series, In the Middle, In the Middle, and uh, this one's really close to my heart because I feel like I've been living in the middle my whole life, <laughs> uh, but seeing God bring some things to fruit at the end. So I have just a couple things to say. So let's start by talking about this. Number one, let's, let's, let's have a conversation about what God shows you or what you desire because that's where it starts. It starts with something that's in your heart or it starts with a dream or it starts with something you desire. It all starts with a, um, yeah, happy anniversary. Everybody, J Josh said that, right? He, anniversary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Two whole years, and uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, two whole years. People say two years, and to me it feels like 10, because they met 10 years ago, and this process, I'm telling you, you, you feel like you're stuck in the middle for a long time. If you're getting your children married in a way that is sustainable, it takes time and a lot of effort. Anyway, in the middle. 
in the middle. So let's talk about what God shows you. What does he show you? What dream pops up in your heart? What is something you want to experience or do? Where are some places you want to go? Some things come up in your heart, and sometimes some of us, we get a vision from God about something. We see it. We feel it in our hearts, right? You can feel like in your heart, Mary, Mary is standing, uh, standing as a little teenage girl, and the angel comes to her and says, you're going to give birth to the Messiah. Hallelujah. Everybody's excited about Mary. She's going to give birth to the King of kings and Lord of lords. That's what he shows you, right? That's what you may see. That's what you may hear. You get what I'm saying? Joseph, Joseph is, Joseph is having dreams. His brothers is bowing to him. <laughs> he is the sun. He's the moon in his dream. Everybody's in love with him, and he is going to be next to Pharaoh. He can see it. He can taste it. He knows this is coming. This is real. He believes it. He puts faith in it. He begins to anticipate it. Am I making sense? Moses, let me tell you what's going to happen with you. You're going to lead my children, all of them, two million and a half people, hard-headed, stubborn, and all that. You're going to lead them out of the wilderness, and you're going to lead them into the promised land. It's amazing. Angels visit him. He has a vision of it. God speaks to him through a burning bush. You can't shake this. You, this is not something you can just uh, say didn't happen. This is for real. Somebody say, Abraham. Abraham, you're going to have a son. And he's going to be the leader of a whole new nation. You're going to leave your father's house, and you're going to have a son named Isaac, and I'm going to make a whole people out of that. By the way, Abraham, let me show you how big this is going to be. Look up. See the stars? Can you count them? No. That's how many kids you're going to have. Look at the sand on the beach, Abraham. This is what's getting ready to happen in your life. Abraham's like, let's go. He leaves his mama's and his daddy's house because he believes. This is amazing, right? David, you are going to be king. You get a word from God, you're going to be king at 16. You're going to be sitting on the throne of Israel. You're going to be the man of, and God's going to use you in this amazing way. And then there is you. What did God show you? What did he tell you? What fell in your heart? What dreams do you have or did you have? How many of those dreams have you left behind? Huh? How many things has God said to you, and now you have made some decisions based on those things? You've looked so forward to it in your mind that you forgot about other stuff, right? Anything anybody else said to you that was contrary to that, you just brain farted it. I mean, that's what I say. It went in your brain, and it was gone. Why? Because you believed in this thing that you were being shown. You felt, or it wasn't God at all. It was something you desired. The building you're sitting in, God didn't tell me to buy it. I wanted to buy it for him. Hmm? But there's stuff that comes into your life that you have a deep desire. Say, I have a deep desire for some things. That comes from God, folks. That's God that puts a desire in your heart for something. He does that. No matter where the inspiration comes from, it's from him. It is undeniable. Now let's talk about what he does not show you. He's going to show you. He's, he's going to, sh okay. He's going to show you. He's going to show you, Mary about the baby, but he's not going to show you that everybody's going to accuse you of having sex outside of marriage. He's not going to show you that your, your guy who loves you is going to put you away silently. He doesn't show you that you're going to have to fight for your two-year-old son because they're coming to kill him. He doesn't, he doesn't show you that everybody's going to hate your son. He doesn't show you. You already know by prophecy he's going to have to give his life, but you don't know how he's going to have to give his life. You don't, God doesn't show you that stuff. He doesn't show you that stuff, and it's intentional. Let me move on. Joseph, 
you're going to be you're going to be the premier but I'm telling you Joseph I'm telling you right now, you do not know and understand what's getting ready to happen. God's not going to show you that your brothers are going to sell you into slavery. Your, your, God doesn't show you that the people you love the most and trust the most are going to betray you. He doesn't show you that. Now, now my name is Martin, and I can talk to you about betrayal. Especially when you're in the middle of something and some people said you could depend on them. Hmm? He, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't show you that you got to go to jail, Joseph. You're going to be a felon before this is over. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't tell you that you're going to have to lean on two guys in prison to get you out. He doesn't show you that stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't show you, Moses, that you're going to commit murder when you shouldn't have. He doesn't show you that. He tells you you're going to lead people out, but he doesn't tell you you're going to end up committing murder. You're going to end up running for your life. You're going to end up leading two and a half million people who are going to hate your guts. He doesn't tell you you're going to have a problem feeding two and a half million people in the desert or giving them water. He doesn't show you this. Am I making sense at all? Yeah, I'm coming to you. Keep thinking. <laughs> right? He doesn't show you, Abraham, you're supposed to have a child, but your wife's going to be barren for a while. He doesn't show you that you're going to have to struggle moving from land to land to land where enemies are created everywhere you go. And no matter where you go, you got a promise of the stars and the moon, but right now you can't even find a friend. God, God doesn't. Show us this stuff. He's not in he's intentional. Uh, he's intentional about giving us a dream. And we only hope it goes deep into our hearts and into our minds that in the middle of it all, we don't walk away. He doesn't tell David. Are you kidding me? If you knew what it took to be a king, you would not receive the vision for it. David, David, your daddy is going to think your mother cheated on him. So they're going to make you live out in the outhouse. You're never going to come to the real house. You're not going to be in the house when Samuel comes to find the king who you are. When Samuel comes to the house, David, you're not going to be in the house. You're going to be out in the field keeping the sheep. That's where you're going to be. Then once you're on your way to the kingdom... You're going to have to fight a Goliath, which everybody's scared of their Goliath. Most Christians are afraid of fighting something big. You're going to have to deal with the Goliath, David, and then you've got to deal with something worse than a Goliath. You're going to have to deal with your family. You're going to have a wife that don't want you to worship. She don't want you to come to church. She don't want you to give nothing. You've got to deal with Micah. Y'all don't know about Micah, do you? You're going to have to deal with your brothers, Eliab, especially who hates you. Then, David, you're going to have three sets of children. The first set of children are going to try to kill you. The second set of children are going to be useless. But the third set is going to help you rule. You're going to have a son, David, that rapes his own sister. You're going to have a son who kills his brother. Go ahead and tell David that. Now, my question to you is, what didn't he tell you? Somebody stand up in the room and say, God, I wish you told me that. If you had just told me that, I would have kept my happy booty sitting at my mama's house. I would have stayed in that apartment. I would have been good down the street, down on 24th Street in that little building. I would have kept my happy booty in there if you had told me I was going to have to raise $10 million with 150 people. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't tell me that. You didn't tell me that if I married this beautiful girl that we were going to end up in divorce court. You didn't tell me that. You didn't tell me on the way to millionaire status I would be bankrupt three times. He doesn't tell you this stuff. And it's intentional. Because some of y'all, me included and first, 
If God had told me, if God had told me, okay, Martin, go ahead and buy the building, it would be pleasing to me. But if he had told me there was a plot against the building when I signed, I never would have done it. If I had known at the time, if, and that's why, brothers, that's why, brothers, we can get very visionary. You need a woman in your life that can discern. Yeah. Linnell says, Martin, this is bigger than a building. I said, I, it could be, but I don't know what that is. And we had to find out there was a city plot for this building. There was a governor plot for this building. They had already planned what they're going to do with it. And here I am, I done signed a piece of paper, and I don't know what war I have stepped into. He don't tell you that your enemies are bigger than you. He doesn't tell you that there, are, that there are people with the plan that are bigger than yours. But when we found out what that was, we have to decide. God didn't tell you, Martin, but what are you going to do in the middle of it? Are you the kind of guy that walks away? Are you the kind of guy that stands for what God wants to do? I'm telling you, you could be in the middle of divorce court, the middle of bankruptcy, the middle of fourth stage cancer. You got two months to live. But now that you're here, you still have a way and a time to make a decision to use your faith. Somebody talk to me. No, he's not going to tell you that. He's not going to tell you that. But now, let me hurry up, though. Don't interrupt me again. So now... Let me tell you how you could feel. You could feel like God is not real sharp. I'm choosing that word. You could feel like God told us we're going to have 12 kids, but now we ain't got any. God doesn't really make sense. Something's wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> you're building your family now it's falling apart and you can say this doesn't make sense God you were at the wedding now what's this you entered into a deal that looks like it might be falling apart and now you're saying how would God bring me into this not tell me about it and let it fall apart you're starting a school, a business, a plan or something whatever was in your heart you're going for it because that's what we teach from this pulpit Am I right about it, anybody? But now you have to make decisions about where you are. Right? You could feel despondent, alone, forsaken, embarrassed. <laughs> I told everybody this is what God was getting ready to do in my life, and now it's not working. Now everybody's looking at you. If I had known, 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 if I had known that the board of directors would bring in an article that they were printing from the World Herald with my name in it, talking about how foolish I was and how I destroyed my church by trying to buy an $8 million building with 100 people. If I had known they were going to put my name on the street and talk about me, I would have stayed in my house with my wife and my two kids and say, the heck with that. People get strange, too, when they be close to you, right? And somebody start talking about you. <laughs> they start trying, y'all, okay, maybe two of y'all. They start trying to separate, you know, you know that, you know that dance that Michael Jackson did? They, they, st they start going backwards. Because they don't want to be associated with anybody that's going through something. But oh, I want to tell you about some people in your life that did what they did with me in my life in this church. They stepped forward and they said, we don't know what's going to happen either. We don't know how this is going to work out, but we're not walking away from it. We're not going to act like we don't know God. We're not going to stand here and act like there's not a God somewhere. Some of them were little and now they're big. So some of these young people in here, they know how to walk through the middle. They, they, you, can't, you can't bark at them. They're wolf proof. <laughs> Why? Because they were here cleaning up. They were here waiting on the first fruit offering to pay people. They were here and watching the miracles. So now you can't mess with them. You can't shoot them away. You can't shut them down. They're not listening to all the noise. 
We have people who go through stuff in their family, and they're so wolfproof, they'll walk right up in here with you. And you're looking at them like, I know what she's going through. Her whole family fell apart. I know what he's going through. The whole business died. And they walk it up in here because they know. You are never in the middle by yourself. They know what God's getting ready to do. They can feel it in their bones no matter what's happening. Can't say nothing to me. Tell your neighbor, you can't say nothing to me. God's trying to do something right now in your family. You ought to take two minutes and let him. You ought to let God tell you right now, sugar, I'm bringing you through this. Honey, we're coming out of this. We are not going to run from this. I'm not losing a dime. I'm not losing a family member. I'm not losing a grandchild. The devil is a liar. There is no truth in him nowhere. If you, if you had told me, if you had told me that there would be a lawsuit against me from the biggest three lawyer companies in the city, the three families who run this city, that they would sue us for this building, that they would block us from having it. I never would have faced them. But I had three men come and talk to me that day. They came and talked to me. Kevin and Winston and Chris came to talk to me. They said, Pastor Martin, you just lead the church. We go into this meeting right here. We fixing to walk up in here. I said, go ahead. Go on, go on up in there. Them brothers walked into that meeting, boy. Y'all would have been so proud of them. They walked into that meeting and they say, listen, our pastor sent us here, but he told us not to fight y'all. We ain't coming with no lawyer. I said, don't fight them. Don't fight them. Don't fight them. Because as soon as you fight, God leaves the fight. As soon as you fight, God leaves the fight. You got to let him fight. God showed up in that room. They still didn't bow, but a couple weeks later, Brother Winston came to me with grace and love, and he says, Pastor, the man who was fighting against us can fight against us no longer. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, he can't fight us no more, Pastor. He can't fight us no more, Pastor. I said, Winston, what are you talking about? Winston's such a man of grace and love and mercy. He says, Pastor, just know he can't fight us no more. I had to look it up and ask somebody else. The man who was fighting us, Chris Butler can't hold water. He'll tell you anything. <laughs> the man who was fighting us was sitting. He was sitting with a tray of food in his house. His wife had fed him dinner. He had eaten his dinner. And on his way to take the tray to the kitchen, he passed away. Now, you know I don't believe that God kills people. I don't believe that. I don't know how or why it happened. That's none of my business. All I know is that three days later, there was no contingency on our land anymore. There's an enemy you think you're fighting and you're not fighting at all. There is a God that is infinite. There is a God that stands in the middle of what's coming against you. Slap your neighbor and say, you ain't in the middle by yourself. You are not in the middle by yourself. Teach your children. They are never in the middle of something by themselves. There's a God who is infinite, who is powerful, who is standing. Slap somebody and say, don't you dare give up on your dream. Don't you dare give up on what you're fighting for. Let me move on because I'm not going to finish this today. Watch this now. Here's the truth. Shada de bo so 
Yende hene morodo kabrande. Si pese hene. Mama tsanda. De mi. He didn't tell you because you didn't need to know. You didn't need to know about a Red Sea. You didn't need to know about Goliath. You don't, you don't need to know about the trouble you're going to go through once you're married. You don't need to know none of that. People don't get married because they're trying to calculate what's going to happen. You don't need to know what's going to happen after your wedding. There's a God that already knows. You don't have to worry what's going to happen in the middle of starting a school or starting a business or building the house. You don't have to know if God told you you're going to be a doctor. You don't have to know how the pretest is going to go. What's that test what to get in? The MCAT. Well, not just ACT. I'm talking about the MCAT, the medical exam to get into med school. You don't have to know how many times you're going to pass or fail it. You, you, don't have to, you, don't have, you don't have to know all that stuff. Why? Because he knows. If the mortgage is in trouble, do you go tell your 12-year-old child? Why not? They don't need. You're his child. You don't need to know. If you're his child, you don't need to know. Yes, we were in trouble in our marriage. We never told our kids. We got some help and worked through it. They don't need to know. And you don't need to know. <laughs> Let me prove it to you. Y'all okay? I ain't been sitting around, y'all. PJ and all these teachers around here, they've been doing a great job, but I ain't been sitting around. I've been in some rooms where I'm in the middle right now. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I know him. Okay, so let me, can I show you something in the Bible? Now, Romans 8, 20, this is, this is crazy. Romans 8, 22, read the first, four, first three words. For we know. Write that down. For we know. Now, what do we know? We know that the whole creation groans and it labors. Why? It, in birth pains because it's waiting for the sons of God to reveal. That's in another verse. But I just want you to read the first three words. For we know. It's laboring to give birth to something. Now, go all the way down to the, 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 the 28th verse. Put that up. We, now, we know about creation. We know that God's birthing pains to get us where we're going. We know that. Say it. We know that. We know what God wants for us. Say it. I know what God wants for me. It's always good. Okay. Now, but, but, but verse 28 says what? And we know, we know something else. What do we know? That all things work together for my good, for the good of those who love God and are the called according to. That's referring to verse 22. We know that the earth is groaning for us to be revealed, and we know that what's ever going to happen in our life works to good all together. This is what you don't know in verse 26. It's in between the two verses. 22, 28, here's 26. Hold on to yourself. What does it say? For we do not know In the middle, it says we do not know what we should pray for ourselves. 
Because we fixing to get ready to go through some stuff. To get from 22 to 26, we getting ready to go through something. So I don't know how to pray for that. I don't need to know what this is. <laughs> That's why I have the Holy Ghost. Well, you religious people just want to pray in tongues. It's so silly, y'all praying in tongues. People are so ignorant, don't understand what Rabbi Sahadaiboso really means. What that really means is, God, I don't know what's happening. <clears throat> you know what's happening, and you going to fix it. What am I going to do? I'm going to dinner with my wife. I'm getting ready to play volleyball with my kids. I'm getting ready to barbecue because I don't know what's happening. I don't care what's happening because you know. That's why I show Toto Bobo Sete Herebo Sota Gaza. Because I don't know. In your life, there are some things you know, and there are some things you don't know. And you don't need to know. You got a Holy Ghost that knows everything. We don't know what we, what we should pray for as we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself makes intercession. In other words, the Holy Spirit stands between the enemies that want to come into my life and me. The Holy Spirit stands there and says, no, you can't do that to him because God made him a promise. But if I let Martin know that, I know Martin. He'll get inside his head. He'll start overthinking. He'll start creating something out of something that's not there. And he'll start making decisions out of bad decisions. He'll start thinking. He'll look at things and say, oh, that's happening to me. And then Martin, because he's simple, because he's human, he'll start to break up relationships for people who are fighting for him. He'll start saying words that are not right to say. So he gives us the Holy Ghost. I'm moving on. Let me move on now. So this is how it goes. Put this up on the screen. If y'all can write it down, take a picture of it, I don't care. Share it. Take a picture of this. Share it on Facebook. Share it on your Instagram. Share it anywhere you can share. Because here, here, here's the thing. Here's the, th here's the thing about God. That Jesus says, Jesus will say to you, let's go to the other side. But he's not going to talk to you about the storm in the middle. Teach your kids early. Sweetheart, none of that matters. None of it. But, but daddy, I didn't do well. None of that matters. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That doesn't, let me tell you how God works, sweetheart. <laughs> Did he invite you to the other side? That's all that counts. If he showed you something, that's all that counts. Can, can I show can, can, Why am I asking you? Let me tell you, let me tell you this, this quick story. Peter and the disciples, Jesus was talking, Josh. He was preaching. And Jesus said to them, you know, let's go to the other side, right? He said, let's go. Now, when he said, let's go to the other side, he got on the boat and went to sleep. Now, but he know everything. I'm going home next week to be with my people. I'm just practicing. He know everything. He knows it's going to be a storm. He went to sleep. <laughs> he, he. So when he went to sleep, the storm came. The boat was sinking. And they said, uh, listen, Peter included, don't you care? We're about to die. Wake up and save us. Don't you care? Don't you care? You made me a promise and it hasn't happened. Don't you care, God, that you showed me we would have this building and we don't have it? Don't you care? You told me you showed me my spouse and now I don't have one. Don't you care? I started this business and now we're in bankruptcy. Don't you care? 
50 years ago, you told me I would be king, and now I'm 100. It can't happen. Don't you care? Jesus wakes up, tells the storm to sit down and shut up. Right? Then he says, oh, ye of... Now, two years later, Jesus says these words to his disciples. Y'all get in the boat, and I'll meet y'all on the other side. The Bible says they were like, "Mm mm-mm, no, we remember the last time, and some of y'all are like what I'm getting ready to describe. God told you to do something. You worked hard, got through it, took away your hair, everything. You worried about it. God finally did it. Then he told you to do something else. You're like, "Mm mm-mm, no, no, no. I'm not going through that no mo. That's too merch. That's too big. That took that gave me gray hair. I lost time in my life. I ain't doing it. Don't raise your hand, but go ahead and raise your hand. I know I'm talking to you. They said, we not going. The Bible says he compelled them. In other words, he gave them an order. I said, get in the boat, go another side. I'm going up to pray. I'll meet y'all over there. In the middle of going on the other side, what happens? What happens? Another storm. And John Brown, it, he ain't even in the boat. He, 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 he is not even with them. And when he shows up, he's walking on water. Watch what happens, though. One of the guys who was in the first boat learned something. He said, shoot. <laughs> I mean, he like, uh, Jesus, is that? I went in the boat one time with you, and you were talking to the waves, but is that you walking on it now? Is, you, is, is that you? He said, yeah, that's me. He said, can I come and do that too? Jesus said, come on. Peter walked on the water. What you're going through is not about the storm. It's about who God is making out of you while you're walking through it. It's not about, it's not about the wind and the waves. It's not even about the middle. It's about who you're becoming in the middle of it. You can't give a woman that's too anxious for a child a child until she's ready to be a mother. Until you're ready for what God built in you. Until you learn. Okay, I'll just say it this way. Now, you're going to keep going through whatever you're going through, test after test after test. He's going to bring you right back around that same mountain to learn those same things in the middle, or you will die in your middle. Whatever, say it, whatever I'm supposed to learn, (laughs) I'm going to learn it. I'm not going through this again. (laughs) Peter learned. That's what changed his life. Say it with me. The middle is the way. You can't get where you're going, Suge. Unless you walk through the middle. You can't go around it. You can't avoid it. It's not going to go away. Yea, though I build a house in the shadow of death. (laughs) Yea, though I stop and pause at quick shop. Going through the valley of death. Yay, I gonna, I'm going to build my life in the valley of death. No, it says, yay, though I walk. I walk through the valley of death. I don't walk to the valley of death. <laughs> I walk through it. Maybe, maybe, maybe one more story for me. I, I try to talk about other people. But if you, if you have a child, and that child, you were told, was 
was, was down the toilet. That child doesn't exist. There's no body there. Martin, she's gone. I'm like, no, she's not. Her name, I named her. I know where she's, I know where she is. Martin, she doesn't exist. So anytime at 25, my not there girl says to me, dad, I'm not sure. I said, girl, let me tell you the story because you don't remember it. You're too little to remember what happened. You were not here. And you telling me, your daddy and your mama, that you're not sure? We were there when they said there's no baby there. There's no pulse. There is no them pictures they used to take 25 years ago. Whatever they were. Now they can do whatever. I said, you weren't there. Now you're here. Now you're telling me God's going to quit on us in the middle. I'll give you one minute, just one minute to think about one thing that you thought would never happen, but God brought you through it. God brought you out of it. Just one thing. Was it a child, business, house, degree? Just one thing you were like, it'll never happen. There's no way God's going to do this for me. It's impossible. And God did it. Tell your neighbor, same God. Tell somebody else, same God. He's the same God then, same God now. <laughs> and some people need to be reminded. You got a child in your family, and now the doctors are telling her, are telling them what's getting ready to happen. You can't do this. You're getting ready to die. You can't have a baby. You can't do this. You can't get a degree. You was in that special class. You were over there. You can't do all this stuff because you went through something. You ought to step up and say, that ain't how God works, sugar. That ain't how God works, baby. That ain't how God works. You just stand on your place and let God fight your battles. Tell somebody, hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battle. He knows how to fight for you, but you mess it up when you fight. He don't need your help. You going to sue him, pastor? No, we ain't suing nobody. That's not how we fight. That's not how we fight. If you got a plan for this building and God gave it to me or us, he must have chosen us to work the plan. Period. That's just the way this goes. <laughs> Am I making sense at all? Okay, so now let me, let me do this. How much time I got? Jesus, okay, I got 10 minutes. Let me show you something. Y'all ready for this? I don't think you are. Let's see. I want to give you a few things to do. So ask me, Pastor, what do I do when I'm in the middle? Number one, be non resistant. Now, they ain't going to tell you this nowhere. They ain't going to tell you this in church nowhere. They ain't going to tell you this because they think you're supposed to resist the devil. Everybody else trying to teach you that there are two powers. There's only one. There ain't no other power. So be non-resistant. Pastor Martin, why are you always first? Because I'm always willing to be last. I'm not going to fight you. Because I don't know how to fight you. I don't have any of those weapons. I can't fight barrenness. I can't fight bankruptcy. I, I, can't, I can't fight schizophrenia. Only he knows how to fight that. I can't make Linnell love me. I can't make her say, okay, the divorce is off. Let's stay together. I can't make her do that. And the more I try to make her do that, the worse it gets. Be non-resistant. Let me, let me read you the scripture because people are going to be like, be non-resistant. We have to resist the devil. That's why you're getting your butt kicked. You believe the devil has something to do with this. I go to intercessory meetings. We're there for two hours binding the devil, and I just wait. In the name of Jesus, we come against you. We stand against. Who? You, you, you standing against what? You ain't got no weapons to fight against the devil. He is so, 
He's so above you. What you going to show it with your nine millimeter? The scripture says, <laughs> you have heard that it has been said. Jesus is correcting the idiocracies of the teaching. You have heard that it's been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. What does he say? Verse 39. Read it loud. Do not resist an evil person. I've been using it all my life. Don't resist an evil person, but what? But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, give him the other three cheeks. Go and slap them all. If you slap him, go ahead and slap him all. <laughs> You're not going to offend me. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to resist you. If I, re what, babe? No, I'm going to say out of that, babe. <laughs> Lee, stop. Leave me alone. So, I'm not, I'm not going to resist. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to resist. If I resist the devil, I'm telling God he's not enough. If you're going to survive in the middle, be non-resistant. Go on about your business. Be like water. Water just flows. Water doesn't argue. It will eventually find a way in your house. You put all the sandbags around that you want. Water going to get up in there. Be like that. Don't resist. Don't resist people when they talk bad to you. Don't you have something to say, Pastor Martin? No, God bless you. I'm so glad you were able to share how you feel. Pastor Martin, you, must, you have to respond. I said, I just did. Well, you, well you, have to, you, you have to, because some people will bring you into counsel with other pastors because they think they got you. So I'm in the room with other pastors who think I'm in the wrong. So I finally say, it's simply like this. Um, I agree with how they feel. But what does it have to do with me? I don't understand what part, I don't know what you, well, you, no, I didn't do that. I was doing something else. That's how you saw it. So I have nothing to do with how you feel, but you can feel any way you want to feel. Don't make no difference to me. Well, you're just cruel. I said, no, I'm living. I'm alive. <laughs> Don't resist. Say it. Number two, watch your friends. If you're going to survive in the middle, you got to keep Job's friends from being around you. Job, what did you do? God hates you, man. Did you, what, did, what happened? <laughs> God done took everything from you. You need to repent. See, here's the problem. When I heard, this, I heard it said this way. When a woman has a hope chest to get married, don't tell your friends about your hope chest. Because some of your friends will come to your house, sit on your hope chest, and hope you won't get married. They're not going to tell you. <laughs> Instead, get a faith chest. Not a hope, faith. Hope is looking into the future, trying to receive something. Faith says I already have him. My husband's already here. My wife's already here. Get a faith chest. Put inside that chest seven things you want him or her to be. Put it inside there. And don't tell nobody. Because everybody don't believe like you. Am I making sense? So now you want to be careful about your friends. Job 42 says this in 10. And the Lord restored Job. This is how you get restored. The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. In other words, this was Job's prayer. I bless you guys. Thank you for being my friends. We're not doing this no more. I'm going to go to God. 
I don't need no more friends like y'all. We've been sitting here for three years, and every day you come, I got a new worm right here. I got a new thing falling off my face. I done lost my finger. This this finger right here to leprosy, ain't none of y'all prayed for me. All y'all just keep coming up in here talking about how bad my life is. I ain't doing this no more. Y'all get out of here. I'm going to go with God. Then he said, but God, I need you though. So I can't find you in the middle. I've been praying. You ain't showed up. You ain't said nothing to me. I've been fasting and you haven't said a word to me. And God said this to Job and Job said it out loud. He said, what am I talking about? I don't know where you are. I went forward and I couldn't find you. I went backwards and I couldn't find you. I looked to my left, I couldn't find you. I looked to my right and I couldn't find you. Then he said, but you know where I am. I don't have to look for you if you know where I am. Restored everything. Tell your neighbor, there's some friends you like. You're going to have to get rid of them. Some of them have your last name. No, I ain't scared of none of y'all. I'm telling you what I experienced. You're going to survive in the middle. There are just some people, they don't need to know what's happening. You don't tell them, please don't tell them their struggle. You tell some of these people your struggle, and they will use it against you. You tell them nothing. Go home and get in your closet. And if you got a problem, if you got a, I just need somebody to feel sorry for me. Say it out loud with me. Ain't nobody going to feel sorry for me. They got their own crap. They ain't going to feel sorry for you. They don't have time, energy, space <laughs> to feel sorry for you. Nobody's coming to rescue you. So if there's something in you that needs to tell somebody, you deal with that in here. Mm -mm, I don't know why, why I just feel like I got to tell somebody. No, that's something going on in Martin. It's too much on Memorial Day, isn't it? What'd I say? Number four? Almost there. Did I say three? Three, watch your perspective. Your perspective decides how you see it. Your perspective says how you see it. Let's do this quick. I know we're online, but I, I got to prove this. Okay, okay. Uh, Callie, in 30 seconds, tell me from where you're sitting, what do you see? Out loud. Say it out loud. What do you see with your eyes? You see a lot of people, a lot of lights. Okay. Huh? Literally, what do you see? Look in at your perspective. What else? You see a cameraman, okay? Uh, what, do you, what do you see back there, my friend? What do you see? What else you see? She sees the back of heads. You see the cameras, the screen. See, she don't even see me. Okay, so Brent, Brandon, what you see? No, 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 hold on. Oh my God. She don't even see me. What, 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 you, what you see, Brandon? What? You see the lights? So he's a media guy. He sees all the media stuff. Y'all not here with me yet, is you? What do you see, Jazz? What you see, Jazz? What you see? What you see, girl? What you see? Chairs, people. She sees her family who's not even in front of her. perspective is your choice on how you see what's happening. You get the choice to see it how you want to see it. And because you don't see it right, <laughs> let me 
tell you what I see. When I stand here because I'm four feet taller than you, I can see you in a whole different dimension. I can see every face in the room. I can see the cameras. I can see that those people back there are the same preachers that I am because they're four foot above you too. They are preaching with me. That's what I see. They are so important that if I was just standing here, I couldn't reach a thousand people online right now because they are preaching with me. That's what I see. That's my perspective. When you have a car accident, when God promised you something and you don't have it yet, who chooses your perspective? You choose how you see it. Once you now perceive, so if I say, oh, if I say, this happened to me, what have I done? I have now given my perspective and my perception. This happened is different than to me. I can decide what happened. I can also decide how it affects me. So I have to watch my perspective and my perception. When you're in the middle, you can't see right. Fear clouds you. Doubt becomes a lens in which you see everything. I had something happen to me months ago, and I was like, what happened? I've never, this has never happened to me. These things don't happen to me. And one person that helped me come to clean it up said, you know, sometimes things just happen. It helped my perspective because I was getting ready, getting ready to go off, O-R-F. <laughs> but the perspective of how I can look at things changes. When you're in the middle, you can look at it from the view that God's not good. God's not faithful. God doesn't care. My faith is not working. And as soon as I have that perspective, my perception tells me it's about me. And because I'm looking at it that it's about me, now I'm going to try to control everybody around me to get me to a place I feel comfortable again. Tell yourself, what I think is happening may not be the real thing that's happening. What if what I'm looking at is not really what's going on? I love this story. A man finally could afford to take his family to Disney. Had his three kids with him. They're at Disney. They're having a great time. It's been an amazing couple days. He has his little girl by the hand. And all of a sudden, somebody from behind him comes and grabs his little girl and starts to run. Grab her, and his daughter is screaming, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And he's trying to catch up with this person, but they were just a little bit faster than him. In his head, somebody's taking my child, and they are running faster than me, and I'm asking for people to help me, and nobody's helping me. Finally, the man with his daughter got slowed up by a crowd in front of him. As he's getting closer, he sees his daughter smiling and laughing. He said, this is crazy. She was screaming. Now she's smiling and laughing. Finally, as he got closer, he heard his daughter said, put me down, Uncle Larry. His twin brother had decided to surprise them and show up at Disney with them. So her uncle picked her up and started running with her. What you think is happening may not be the thing that is. It depends on your And your perspectives comes from what you believe. That's why this, 
That's why, that's why this sermon series is so important. Your perspective comes from what you really believe inside. You either believe God's good and he's for you or that God is bad and he's not for you. You, you believe either way. No one's in the middle. So everything that happens to you, you read it from that perspective. From that perspective, God's good. Y'all know the story, the Christmas story. I got it. Why, why, am I, why are y'all making me work so hard? Yeah. Under the Christmas tree, they were smelling something in the house. And under the Christmas tree, a bow was there for the two girls in the house uh, in a box there. They opened the box. Both of them opened the box. Inside the box is poop. One girl says, oh, it's poop. Daddy, why would you get us poop? The other girl goes, we're getting a horse. There was a horse out in the stable. Shout, I got to see this right. I said shout it, I got to see this right. If I don't see this right, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to mess up the whole thing. The man called me and said, you're not getting this building, preacher. You're not worth it. I've already checked you out. You don't have the money. You don't have any people. He was right. (laughs) But a day later, I told my wife, I said, shoot, I'm calling him back. I'm going to tell him how good God is. I'm going to tell him how good God is. And my wife said, why are you calling him? I said, because he need to know. He didn't know how good God is. She said, no, you done got in your feelings. You done got in your feelings, Martin, and now you want him to know that you are getting him back. And when I prayed about it, God said, you were getting ready to mess something up. I didn't know what God was doing behind the scenes. One question for you, Sister Christian. How many ways can you solve this problem in front of you? How many ways could you solve it? Count them. How many? How many do you think? Huh? How many ways could God solve it? Then stay the heck out of his way. Don't call nobody. <laughs> Don't write no letters. <laughs> Don't make no threats. Let God handle it. What's my next point? I got to get out of here. Y'all okay? If you're in the middle, oh, that's that's right. All that tells you what is this and what does it mean. Number five, almost there. Watch your comparisons. Comparison is a useless, it's useless and unwise. Here's what the scripture says. But let each one examine him own, his own self, his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not while you compare yourself to other people. For each one shall, there you go, for each one shall bear his own load. Last one. For we dare not class our says, ourselves. Say, I'm, I'm not in your class, sugar. Dude, I I'm not in your class. We in a totally separate class. We're in a totally different class. We're not in the same class together. Y'all help me out. Watch this now. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who contend themselves, but they measure themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves is not wise. Me looking at my friends, me looking at my friends growing up, and in the dorm, I played with some amazing athletes uh, 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 at, at, at USM, ran with some amazing athletes in track. They went on to the pros. People came to our games. People came to our track meets, and they would be looking at them. Nobody ever interviewed me. Nobody ever talked <laughs> to me. They were interview- and they're my classmates, and they're my roommates. We're living in apartments together in the dorm. So sometimes people would say, well, what do you think about Lewis Lips? I said, that's Lewis Lips. Y'all don't even know Lewis Lips. That's Lewis Lips. That, I'm Martin Williams. He is amazing at this sport. I am not. I got a scholarship. I'm getting my degree. I am not going to the pros. That is not what's getting ready to happen, right? Why would I compare myself to somebody who is better at me at what they're doing? I have no comparison to him. 
we're not in the same class. Girl, you can't compare yourself to other women. If your husband tells you he likes you, he likes you. But she looks better. He ain't just looking for good looks. He's looking for something else. He's looking for somebody he can get down with. Watch. Y'all get what I'm saying? What did I just say? What was my last point? Don't ever compare yourself, especially in the middle, because you're going to get messed up if you try to be like somebody else. You never try to be like somebody else. And if you have the, if you have the pro- proclivity, likelihood, or desire to be someone else, Get off social media. Don't watch nobody. Don't listen to nobody. You listen to yourself. If you're a singer, stop listening to Donnie McClurkin. Ain't never going to be no Donnie McClurkin. You is who you is. Watch yourself. Protect your voice. Whatever you do, people, people say, people say, you you know, T.D. Jakes, he's just, I mean, aren't you, I mean, aren't you a little bit jealous of him? I'm in meetings where people are jealous of T.D. Jakes. I'm like, why would we be jealous of T.D. Jakes? Can't none of us in this room, you put us all together. We wouldn't add up to 1% of what T.D. Jakes can do. Why are we having this stupid conversation? Martin, we ain't inviting you no more. I told y'all I didn't want to come to this meeting. Y'all asked me to come. I'm like, why would we be sitting in here talking about him? It makes no sense. And then my, my wife wasn't there to kick me under the table. I said, <laughs> I kept talking. I said, do y'all know what T.D. Jakes went through to be where he is? Any of y'all ready to go through that middle? Any of y'all ready to go through the middle? Well, some of your children don't know who they are sexually. Some of your children, some of your children in jail. Some of your, your wife lost her mind. Some of the, he went bankrupt 10 times. Can any of us pay that price? No. So we should shut up talking about him. Me trying to get up here and preach like T.D. Jakes, get ready, get ready, get ready. Or to the Bismarck, the Lord said, ha, I'm going to swallow a fly. That's not what I do. I'm coming. <laughs> Why would I do that? I'm going to lose every day. But if I show up every day as Martin, <laughs> how you going to deal with that? There ain't but one of you, baby. Ain't but one of you. Every day, just show up as you. Just show up everywhere. Show up in the bank as you. Show up at the university as you. Show up at the hospital as you. Wherever you go, show up to McDonald's as you. Everywhere you go, just be yourself. Let them deal with it. Watch your thoughts. Your thoughts creates worlds, words. Let me move on. Go to the next one. Watch what you're thinking. Watch what you're thinking. Watch what you're thinking. What am I thinking? Slow your mind down. Meditate. Your mind gets so in front of you. Oh, your mind is way out there. Your mind is like, oh, that happened. So that means this, and that means that, and that means this, that means that, and that means this, and that means that. Lord, we're getting ready to lose the house. That ain't what happened. You just got a letter that reminded you just to pay your note. <laughs> the text comes across from the person you're dating, and the text just says, you know, I can't make it tonight. That's all it says. And in your mind, you're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> they don't like me no more. I'm going to have to look for a new one. That ain't what happened. They just had an emergency at work and they got to do something. They should be able to trust you not to run away with stuff in your head. And God is saying, every time you get in trouble, I am not waking up. I am not waking up. I'm not. I'm in your boat. I ain't waking up every time. I'm not going to get up. Don't you care if we dying? Well, if you don't want to die, you better get up there and tell the storm to sit down. Because I ain't waking up every time. Every time you go through something, you want God to wake up and take care of it for you. No, he done already took care of it for you because he told you to go. 
He's not getting up. He's not waking up. He already told you to go. He provided for you to go. I told the man, I said, if you can take this building, take it. We're not going to fight you. None of us are going to fight you. But we went in that intercessory room, and we lifted our hands, and we said, Lord, let your will be done. Elders and ministers and babies and people, we just said, God, this is your thing. We ain't fighting nobody. We ain't trying to take nobody down. Well, the, 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 the world herald called me and said, would you like to give a rebuttal against what they're saying about you in the paper? And I said, no, I don't have one. Well, you, you, don't you think people deserve to know your perspective? I said, you know, you're right. They do. I said, my perspective is this. The Lord giveth. Oh, y'all. Oh, I'm telling you now. Who? Oh, the Lord giveth and the Lord might take away. But at the end of the day, it's going to be blessed be the name of the Lord. He is God above all gods. He's Lord above all lords. And there is nothing or nobody that can happen that will take me out. If God takes it, I'll let him take it. They didn't print that, y'all. They didn't put me in the paper. They didn't want to hear nobody say, I'm not fighting you. That whatever happens to me, God is good. It's my perspective. Let me ask a question and I'm going home. What is the mountain in front of you? What is the thing that's in front of you that's bigger than you? That's keeping you in that place? You ought to say to it. Zerubbabel ought to say to it, who are you? Great mountain that you should not bow to the will of God. Who are you, great mountain that's standing in front of me that you think I'm going to walk away? Who are you, great mountain that you think I will give up because you're in my way. I will not. I will not bow my knees to you. But I'm also not going to fight you. I'm going to stand right here. That's your altar call right there. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm going to keep my voice. I'm not going to let my mind run away with me. I'm not going to try to make up scenarios that are not there. Because I'm not sure what's happening. I'm going to let God handle it. That's your altar call today. What is your faith? Your faith is your actions built on what you believe. What do you believe? Do you believe God is good? If you believe he's good, go out today. Shoot, if you don't got a pool, turn on your garden hose and get under it. Just put it up in the air, stand under it and say, God, thank you for my pool. Go get some ice cream. Go walk in the park. Go on about your business. going about your business. Don't teach your children how to worry. Some of your kids are losing their minds right now. They're crazy and you wish you could kill them and eat them. I understand. But to prove that you trust God, it's time for you to go to sleep. You got to let him deal with this. I told my pastor, I said, Pastor Strong, I want to be a good pastor. I want to be an example for people. I, I, I want to be in a place where people can say, Pastor Martin, uh, he's a good man. He's not failed. He's, he, he walks before God in integrity. I said, that's what I wanted. He told me that day, he just looked at me and smiled, and he said, do your best. 
20 years later, he brought the question up. Pastors do that. He said, so have you been that man you wanted to be? I said, Bishop, I haven't. I have failed. I've made mistakes. I went through things in my own family. I had some losses. He said to me, now you're a pastor they can look up to. He never loses. Not once. And he will not lose for you. That's your altar call. On your feet if you can. If you'd rather sit, sit. It's fine. Who are you, great mountain, that you should stand before God and stand before me? He's a God that's never lost a battle. So if you're in the middle right now, if you're in a battle right now, and you're confused, you're perplexed, you're not sure what's happening, you can step out in the aisle. You can step out in the aisle. You can come up front. I'm only going to be here a couple minutes. You can come up front. You can step over in a corner. You can go where you, you know you're in it. You know you're in the middle of it. the darkness. He has never lost a battle. Come on. Oh, I. Give it to him. You should not bow low. Give it to him. Jesus, the the darkness. Give it he to him. He has never lost a battle. Who oh, are you, great mountain? Come on. You should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost the battle. So when listen to the sound Hi-ya. of power on my lips, Woo. Jesus has broken the curse. He has, has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mount? That you should not I cannot avoid the middle. I can't go around it. I have to walk through it. I have to. But what I gave you today, I'm telling you, the stuff I gave you today, if you'll pay attention to it, you'll be amazed at what happens in the next seven days. Put this in the hands of the Lord right now. Last sermon series was altars. Leave that thing right here. Don't take it to your seat with you. It's not for you to carry anymore. It's not for you to carry anymore. You've carried it long enough. Leave it here. And tell God, I give this to you. And I'm only going to do something if you tell me to do it. I'm not going to get lost in my head and start thinking about stuff I shouldn't be thinking about. I'm going to stay in my moment with you. And I'm no longer hanging out with people who want to tell me how bad it is. God's going to do something for you one day. One day. No. God's doing something for me now. In this moment. That's what I believe. Say it with me. The middle is my way. Say it again. The middle is my way. Come on, say it out loud. The middle is my way. Wherever I'm going, come on. Wherever I'm going, come on. Wherever I'm going, if there's a baby coming, if there's a business coming, if there's a career coming, whatever is coming in my life that God promised me, the middle is my way there. 
Amen. So do I dismiss him? Something's happening here. Can we have 60 more seconds? Come on, worship team, just sing that. Sing it. Sing it strong. Worship everybody. Come on. Come on. Who are you, Great Mountain? Come on. You should not bow low. Can somebody pray for you? Jesus defeated the darkness. Come on. He has never lost a battle. Come on, help us pray. He has never lost a battle. Who are you, great 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 Who are you, Or some of you, how many of you hear very clearly from the Holy Spirit? Like he talks to you and you're like, that's what he said. Okay. As I was sitting over here, um, I think it's the Holy Spirit, Miss Jessica. But as I was sitting over here, I started to like look over you. And ever since becoming the lead of AWC, there's like this sixth sense that you get now when it comes to people. And the Holy Spirit was just showing me just some of the stuff that you guys in the purple seat and that are online are walking through. And that there is a spirit of loneliness in this room. That some of you are going home and you can't wait to get to church on Sunday, but you dread going home. That you love going to work, but you hate going home. That you love seeing your family, but you hate going home. You love hanging out, but you hate going home. And now what the enemy is trying to do 
So he's trying to create a prison out of the area where, where you're supposed to get rest. And where you're supposed to get rest, where you're supposed to have peace, where you're supposed to not have to fight. Like you fight the world all day and then you come home and you got to fight at the crib too. Who am I talking to? It's just like, I can't find peace anywhere. I believe that the word that Pastor Martin gave today, that you can proclaim peace over yourself. But you don't need nobody to lay. I'm trying to tell you, this sermon series, this is new. But this sermon series, the same power that you think is happening up here, guess, guess who else has that power? I dare you to put your hand on the front part of your head like this and your other hand on your stomach like this. What we understand is that we have the same mind of Christ, which means that if God has anointed himself, that means that he has also anointed you. You put your hand here because everything that you do in your life starts right here. The reason why you put your hand here is because there are some things in your life that you need to become hungry for again. But you can't become hungry until you realize that you're never alone. Right, right there where you are, begin to declare over yourself, I'm not, I'm not alone. If I got myself and I got you, I'm not by myself. We come against the spirit of loneliness and depression. We come against the spirit of frustration. We come against the spirit of people believing that they have to fight something. Pastor Martin already said it today. Right now, loose yourself from all of your bondages. Loose yourself from the weapons. Like, begin throwing the weapons down that you've been using to defend yourself. Stop defending yourself and give it to God right there where you are. Come on. Declare it over yourself. I am free. I have peace. I have rest. It's going to work because God has called me to do it. Come on, declare over yourself, AWC. We're so excited. Thank you for coming to church today. Thank you for watching online. We're not going to disturb uh, the, the atmosphere that's here in the room. But one thing, Journey to Partnership starts next week. If you want to become a part of what we're doing here at AWC, go to the app right now. Sign up for JTP. It's not too late because we know that where we're going, we need you to be a part of it. I want to release you, but do not leave this atmosphere until you get what you need from the Holy Spirit. Is that all right? Every hand lifted. Let's go. Father God, we thank you so much for the word that was spoken today. Father, yes, sir. Hold on. I'm sorry. Can we stretch our hands towards our pastors really quick? Specifically, Pastor Martin, really quick. Bring the music down. I'm going to take this time because I have the mic. AWC, we would not be where we were, where we are right now, without Pastor Martin. Really quick, I want you to understand something. That this man is being, trying to be attacked by the enemy. This man is trying to be, the, the enemy is trying to attack this man. The city, there, there, are, there are things that, are, that, that need to be done by Pastor Martin and by Pastor Linnell so that we have the ability to do what we need to do. Remember what I said before? Our two years in marriage means nothing because somebody's done it for 53. That's what makes our marriage mean something. So if we're going to push forward, and if God is going to bless AWC and bless your house, the word of God says that the double portion goes to the man or the woman of God that has given their life to the ministry. So I need you to pray fervently for Pastor Martin just for about two minutes, right there where you are. Begin praying in the Holy Spirit. Speak life. Speak peace. Speak rest. And if this is weird to you, don't pray. If this is weird, if you think this is un... Don't pray, but open up your mouth, AWC. God, we thank you for Dr. Martin Williams. God, we anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, we call the mission on the inside of him to be done and complete in Jesus' name. God, we speak to long health and longevity in Jesus' name. God, the time that he has given, the time his wife has given to this ministry, we pray for a double portion. Come on, tap into that just for a second. A double portion of rest, a double portion of peace. God, we declare and decree from the north, the south, the east, and the west, people that do not want anything from them, that do not call, that are not called to harm them or hurt them, will be called to their left and their right. God, we pray for advocates in Jesus' name, people with resources and influence, that that the, that the work that they've done in the past will not be done in vain, but that they will reach the mark. In Jesus' name, somebody say hallelujah. 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 Father God, lastly, we thank you for every person that decided to show up to church today. God, we ask that you would give us a different type of grace today to put down our weapons. God, that we would realize that the way to where we're going is like what Pastor Martin said, it's the middle. God, give your people the strength to walk through the middle, through it, not to it, through it in Jesus' name. God, we ask that you would keep us safe as we leave this place and as we go. God, make sure that you keep us safe also tomorrow on our day off, that we would not forget that it's not just a memorial for what people did, but that you are the memorial that we celebrate. In Jesus' name, if you're happy to be in church, can somebody say amen? amen. And amen. We love you, AWC.